Hi everyone, it's Heather from Nightly Reading. I am here with the famous Jennifer L. Armentrout, also known as Jay Lynn, Jenny Trout, <laughs> anything JLA. else? JLA. yes, that's a big one. So my first question for you is, I know you've written a ton, ton of books. Could you tell us how many books exactly that you had written? Well, with the publication of Don't Look Back, I think that was my 24th book published. And I think counting, not counting books that will like never see the light of day, I think I've written 30 to 31 books. All of those books are con contracted. So all of them are books under contract and yet to come out. Oh, that's good. So there's what, the six more that are definitely contracted. Very exciting. There's more contracted I haven't written yet, but <laughs> i got to get on that. <laughs> so you are a full-time writer? Yes. Okay. And that's, because I was so curious, I know, was it last year? Last year you had a lot of books come out. Yes, it was um, kind of like this year. It was, uh, but last year I want to say it was every other month or every month mm -hmm. there was a book coming out. And, and this year, I think it's like, I mean, I can just give you a quick breakdown. <laughs> Be With Me came out February 4th. White Hot Kiss came out February 25th. Mm -hmm. I had a break in March. Um, Don't Look Back came out this week. Tempting the Bodyguard comes out May 12th, I think. Um, then Opposition, well not Opposition, Obsidian and Onyx and Opal and Origin re-released June 3rd. Okay. Opposition comes out August the 5th. Um, Stay With Me comes out September the 2nd. And uh, Stone Cold Touch comes out in October. So... So in a typical day, how much time do you think you spend writing in a typical um, day? Probably anywhere between 8 and 10 hours, um, but it's not consecutive. I mean, I find myself on Twitter a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I look for new Theo James GIFs daily. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I have so many. Um, and then I, I get stuck on BuzzFeed, so it's not like I work a straight 8 hours. Um, no. You must have some pretty heavy typing fingers. Yes, I do. I'm like... <laughs> I just, it just amazes me that you can come out with that many books in one year. It's crazy. It wasn't planned. I guess like when I signed the contracts and when the editor started doing the production schedules, my, my agent has a spreadsheet. <laughs> I think I'm the only client that she has a spreadsheet for that has all my release schedules. And when we started seeing them, we're like, crap, it's back-to-back -back releases, which wow. is hard. It's hard to market. It's yeah. hard to do all that stuff when it's like that. But So... Going back to, I believe your very first book was how, Half your very Blood. Half Blood, Damon, the prequel novella okay. kind of was, yeah. Coming to now, were you surprised at um, all the feedback that the positive feedback that you had received from everyone? Oh, of course. I mean, I think that, I mean there are times that I still can't believe people like the books. <laughs> like, you know, I think that it's just, it's weird because, like, for example, I never read what I write after it's done. Don't Look Back was the first book that I sat down a couple weeks ago and read mm -hmm. because I wrote that in 2011 and edits were in 2012, so it's been years, and I'm like, it's like reading somebody else's mm -hmm. book. I'm like, what happened? Um, but it's, yes, I mean, I think, I think, yeah, yeah. You always, you hope for the best, but I think in this industry, like, you have to be very kind of grounded, and because there's always going to be people who don't like your stuff, mm -hmm. and there's always going to be people, hopefully, that do, but yeah, I think I'm always blown away when people come up and they're like, I've read all your books. I'm like, that's a lot of books. <laughs> do you still find yourself going on and reading people's reviews, like, oh. on Goodreads, and, or no. do you stay away? I stay away from that. Um, and the reason being is because I feel that reviews are not for me. They're mm -hmm. for other readers. And because, like, I think a lot of people, like, well, do you read the good reviews? And if, if I trust or know a blogger, then yes. If they t tweet it to me, I'll read it. Um, unfortunately, some people will tweet you, like, one-star reviews, and they don't look like one-star reviews mm -hmm. until you get there, and you're like, ah, oh, Twitter bomb. Yeah. <laughs> like, right in my face. But... So you, I have to know know a person, but even really positive reviews, I think, can mess with you your writing. Right. And I think, you know, because I don't, I don't know the right way to say this, but I think sometimes if you get too much positive mm -hmm. feedback, it's like you start believing your own hype kind right. of thing. And I think that does affect your your writing. I can um, see the negatives affecting your writing mm -hmm. just as much. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I mean, because you do stumble across the negative reviews sometimes, and some of them are kind of funny. I mean, because mm -hmm. you know, they, they, you know, some of them are legit. Like they have legit problems with the book, and then you know, some of them just kind of go off on a, <laughs> another thing. Um, like Alex will always hold a special place mm -hmm. because that was like the first series that mm -hmm. I wrote, so she's always gonna hold a special place. It really depends on what I'm working on. Like, and then I end up really liking those characters more, but then I move on to another book, and then right. it's those characters that um, you know. I know that's a yeah. that's a tough one. Yeah. It is. We heard that the Lux series has been sanctioned for a movie. Do you have any update on what's going on with that? Yeah. Um, there, there is stuff happening. I can tell you, yes, there is stuff happening. I just cannot share yet what's going on. Okay. <laughs> But there is stuff happening. Yes, yes. You yes, heard it. Yes. <laughs> it was optioned in July, and what you know, people have to keep in mind is these things take a take very forever. long yes. period of time, and Hollywood is slower than publishing. So it's it's a very but then when things happen, they happen very fast. Mm -hmm. But yes, some very important steps have been achieved. Now, will you be happened. involved in the process? It's it's really up. It's up to them. It's up to them. Now, with the Covenant series option, I've been very involved. That was my next yeah. question. Got it. Um, yeah, with the Covenant series, I've been very involved in terms of, the, like, the Harry Worksman, who is doing the adaptation, and he is awesome. We're so, so lucky to have him, and he really is an industry veteran. When I saw, I went to Internet Movie Database and looked him up, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, good God. I was like, Castle, Ugly Betty. I mean, it just list goes all the way back to Star Trek. I mean, wow. it's just, you know, what he's worked on, and, and he's written and produced. And I could tell that he loved the series as much as I did. Like, And, and the great thing about that is, is he feels an ownership to that series. Mm -hmm. And I know some people would like, would that be weird because you wrote it? And I'm like, no. I mean, because it's got to be a part of him too. And it's right. part of his baby now. So um, I could tell that he really did love it. And, you know, and, I, and I've had, the, I've actually gotten to read, I don't know if I'm supposed to share that or not. <laughs> Shh, um, don't I've tell actually nobody. seen the script. Okay. So, well, it's a screen treatment, which isn't a script script yet, but it's like the the treatment for it and okay. it goes over like the pilot episode and the synopsis and stuff do like we that. have so, an idea when this will be coming out no i mean this is okay. uh, it still has to be uh piloted mm -hmm. by a network so cross your fingers i mean i think that's what they're moving into next is that kind of stuff so yeah so hopefully <laughs> it gets picked up for a pilot and then the pilot would be filmed and then based on the pilot the network would order a season so when that finally happens, everybody needs to watch so we can continue, right? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Lots of people. I think, at least I feel like, I know I'm not the only one, but I feel like I'm the only person in the whole entire world that is in, absolutely in love with Seth. It is More agent. than Aiden is. Oh. <laughs> For some reason. No, he has a lot of fans, yeah. actually. I think it's he's more bad... Boy. Yeah, I think he's more, I mean, Aiden is actually, like, when I wrote Elixir and Aiden's POV, I actually found that kind of difficult, because I think Aiden, when I started writing his POV, is more complex mm -hmm. than what I realized, because he seems very calm on the outside, but right. inside he's not, but, and, but Seth, you know, he's been through a lot, and, you know, he's, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah. that's all right, but you're coming, but, yes. we're talking about the series, series. yeah, so Seth, I mean, he, is, the, the return is in his POV, and it's actually in the girls' POV, too. And it was it was kind of hard getting in Seth's POV. I think I wrote maybe one or two scenes in Seth's POV for extra bonus content for, mm -hmm. I think, like, um, some kind of tourney. So it was hard getting in his POV, especially after everything that's happened. You know, he is not the same person. Mm -hmm. He has some of the same characteristics, but he's not the same. Um, the Return picks up a year after the events of Sentinel. Okay. Um, and you will see some of the characters from the Covenant series. You'll see uh, Apollo. He's in it. Um, uh, Deacon and Luke are in it. Okay. Um, Marcus. Um, and um, Alex's father. Is okay. It. So you do see some of those characters. They, okay, they do I'm play so well. excited. I, well, what is your favorite genre to read? Uh, I've been on a historical romance kick recently. Um, I, I love to read historical romance because I don't write it. Um, I can't write it. I tried to convince my agent to let me write a historical romance where they talk like normal day. Mm -hmm. She was like, no. <laughs> she 
Feels like they'll tell you part on that. <laughs> um, but uh, it's uh, I like to read historical romance because when I read it, my brain shuts down. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, th I think when I read contemporary and I read paranormal, it's like it makes me start thinking because it's, I'm in that same genre. But right now, I've been rereading all the Brotherhood books again. J.R. Ward Brother. Um, I have them. I have not read. Oh my them. gosh, you need to read them. Everyone keeps telling me that, and they are on my shelf. But mm -hmm. I just they're great. Um, and there are a lot of books. So you take a lot of time, and so I've been. I don't know. How, I think I might have the first five. There's like twelve or thirteen, I think, maybe. <laughs> Book that you read and really, really enjoyed. Um. Okay. So I read Jail Words the King, which mm -hmm. is her most recent one. Really enjoyed that. I read a new adult that I don't even know if they've made the announcement yet, and I can't think of the name. I, I read it for a blurb. Um. I can't even think of the name of the book now. But I don't even know if I can talk about that. I really love that book. And I read Sophie Jordan's Teas. Okay. Love that. And what I really like about that book is it really, you know, explores a different side. Mm -hmm. of, you know how it always is. It's like, you know, like the girls all like, I've never had sex. And the guy's like, I've had sex mm -hmm. with everybody in the world. It's kind of, it's not really the opposite of that. But it's, it's it messes with that trope. It flips it. and it's But it's not like that, though. I mean, you have to read it. Um, and then I also read her his, historical romance. I think it's called, and she's going to kill me if I learn this, um, the, the Debut's Guide to Ruin. Um, it comes out this year. So, mm -hmm. Who is the one author that inspires you the most? Well, that's a hard question because I think, I think it, it's hard to pick just one. I'm just not. I mean, since I just met J.R. Ward, we went to one of our signings, um, and she's very inspiring to listen to. And, you know, she, she doesn't do, like, these big motivational speeches mm -hmm. or anything. I, I do like the fact that she's actually pretty much a potty mouth in, you know, at the thing, so it's just hilarious to me. But uh, I, th I think it's just inspiring any time that you see another author talking about what they do. Um, oh, my... I guess I've, I've had to say, like, my favorite authors, like Rachel Vincent, mm -hmm. um, Gina Oliver's Demon Trapper series, Erica O'Rourke wrote mm -hmm. Torn. She has another series coming out. Um, Wendy Higgins... Sophie Jordan, um, uh, oh gosh, Carol, Carol, Carrie Lynn Schultz, oh my god, I can't believe that oh, I like Carol messed up these yes. things, um, all of them really, and there's more, I mean, I think all of them are inspirational for a different reason, now, the people who actually inspired me to write was L.J. Smith, okay, um, I, you know, when I was a teenager, that's when the Vampire Diaries came mm -hmm. out, but it wasn't the Vampire Diaries that got me, it was the Forbidden Game by her. So if you guys, Forbidden The game. Forbidden Game, oh my god, that series wrecked me. Um, but her and Richie Kusick, um, now Richie Kusick wrote like Trick or Treat, The Lifeguard, Silent Hill. I mean, they were like these little tiny, like, I love them. And that's what I kind of mirrored Don't Look Back in mm -hmm. the, the new book with Disney. It comes out next year. Um, it's called The Dead List. They haven't really talked about it. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that or not. But <laughs> anyway. Um, and kind of mirrored them after those books because you never really knew of like if, if it was supernatural and in the end it was never supernatural. It was like the Scooby-Doo gang, you know, and you oh, pulled off the mask. Mm -hmm. It was always like Mr. Bob down the street. But those books were great in that way that it always made you question like is somebody doing this or something else doing this? So I love those books, but they are the ones that inspired me to write. And my last question, just what are you working on now? Edits. <laughs> Lots of edits. <laughs> Lots of edits. I am in the process of editing five books. Not at the same time, but five books are basically are in the process of coming in at the same time. But I am actually working on a, when I'm done the edits, a YA contemporary romance. So, oh, yeah. that'll be fun. Yeah, and it's fun to me because that book's not contracted. So it's mm -hmm. like, it's been a while since, luckily, I mean, I don't want to say that I'm lucky to have that, but it's been a while to just write something that there's no expectations, nobody right. is, you know, had their hands in it yet, you know, so it's, it's fun to do that. But, I just asked one favor, could you give a shout out to <laughs> Kaylee from K-Books? Oh, she loves you. I love Kaylee. I know. Kaylee's got to get her butt on a plane to the United States. <laughs> All right, well, Jennifer, thank you so much thank for you. doing thank this. You for and we'll look for your all your <laughs> 500 releases. 500 <laughs> releases coming out this year. And if you have not read a book by Jennifer, you are totally missing out. And you've been living under yeah. a rock. Bye. Bye.